Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Painting with a Prayer. This is our last session, and I so appreciate you guys coming together with me this evening. This project tonight is going to be a plant hanger. As shown in this image, we're going to create something very similar. The reason I chose this project tonight is because I'm sure we all feel like we're kind of hanging by a thread, but whenever this happens, just remember who is holding the spool. So of course, this reminds me of a plant hanger. First, you will need some newspaper for your workspace. Then you'll need a cleaned tin can, make sure that the glue is off of there. You will need brushes of a few different sizes. You will need a paper plate for your paint. You'll need a paper towel for washing out your brushes and cleaning them. You will also need a spool of thread or yarn. Anything would work as long as it feels a little bit durable. You will need scissors for cutting later on. You will need paint of any colors of your choice. And you will need a can of water that is completely clean. We're going to start by painting the tin can of any color of your choice. We're just going to create a base coat around the entire can and I'm going to choose the larger brush for this portion and I'm also going to choose a white color for the base. So you just need a little bit of paint for this portion. I would say just slightly bigger than a quarter and you can always add more paint as we go just as to not waste it as much as possible. So we're going to begin painting the can and something that I'm quickly realizing is that a vertical stroke is not the best for this project. So I'm going to change it to a horizontal stroke to fit the grain inside of each of the divots on the can. Hopefully you'll have a can that's small enough that you can hold it like this with your fingers at the top and the bottom. This will help with the movement of the can so you can get every single side without having to set it down and it allows you to paint from top to bottom while keeping your fingers fairly clean. Please note that if you don't see full coverage and you see the tin can showing through, it's completely fine as we're going to use different paint colors later on to cover the entire portion of this paint can. So we're just going to do a few different layers to begin with and this also creates a little bit of a rustic vibe if you keep some of that tin can showing through as you'll see a little bit later on. Now that the first coat is done, I'm going to just let that dry and sit aside for a second. And as you can see, you'll notice that some of the paint is starting to mattify, and that's when you'll know that it'll be drying. So we're just going to set this aside for a little bit. And while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and grab a few different colors of your choice. I'm going to start with an orange color.
I want to make my orange color a little bit of a burnt orange, so I'm going to add a golden brown color to the orange just to make it a little bit darker and a little bit more on the golden side. And I will also add a little bit of a surprise to this later on that we will discuss. Lastly, I'm going to add some of this gold color. This has a bit of a sparkle flicker in it that creates a really, really nice shine whenever you look at different angles. So now I'm just observing the can and seeing how it's drying. Just letting that dry a little bit more. And we are going to do a few other coats to this. So once you feel that it looks like it is dry enough to do a second coat, you can go ahead and start that process. Again with this portion, I'm just trying to do a very light to medium coverage of the can because I want a little bit of that tin can showing through to create more of a rustic vibe. So just cover this as best as you can and to your preference if you would like a more full coverage you are welcome to just finish off that portion of the tin can and you can always rewind this video once it has been posted to our Facebook page in case you can't keep up or in case you just fall a little bit behind. All right, so I'm just finishing off this coat here. To me, this looks good, so I'm just going to set this down and let this dry a little bit more. After some thought, I decided I want to add another color to the design later, so I'm going to just add some black to my paper plate, and you just need a small amount for this, as this will just be part of the design later on. Just letting this dry to completely become matte so we can go ahead and put on that final layer. This is looking dry so I'm going to start putting on the final layer, layer three. I'm just going to take more of that white paint and apply it all over the tin can.
So this is one part that is just hard for any painter to overlook, is just seeing these little blemishes as you're painting. But then you just have to realize that, like I've been saying this whole time, it's okay to have that tin can show through because we are going to put a design on that and so that always kind of covers up those little mistakes. I'm going to clean out my brush completely and I can just let that rest in there as I grab my other brushes for different colors. I'm going to just grab one of my fluffier brushes that is kind of a medium size. I'm going to start mixing this blue color together. I'm trying to just kind of create a little bit of a turquoise color um, that's not as green, but as I'm mixing this, I notice it is a little bit too blue now. So one thing I'm going to do is just go back with the different paint colors, add more of this light teal. And then I will also add some white to brighten it up a little bit. So this is finally becoming the perfect shade. So we are just going to get this all mixed up so you don't see any other individual colors anymore. I'm now going to clean out the previous brush that I used for the white and make sure it's completely dry, completely clean. And we are actually going to go in with this gold shade that you can see right here. I'm going to just go on the end of this gold color and coat both sides of my brush. Just very light coats for this portion. This pigment that I currently have is very pigmented. And if you have a gold color, you're welcome to use any brand. This is just a more pigmented brand for more professional artists. I just got this for a present a few years ago and it's been a great addition to my paint set. You're going to just swipe this in different motions back and forth. You'll see that you'll want the paint to be wet because this helps blend it together a little bit. So you're just going to keep doing this motion completely random around this entire tin can and it will look a little bit rough at first, but you'll see that the finished product, it looks really nice. It just creates a little bit of a gold shimmer around the entire can. All right, so we're just creating the same look around the entire can. Repeating this process, you can just go back and fill in those parts that you think could use a little bit more of this gold color or any color of your choice. And just fill those parts in as you feel they need to be filled in. All right, once that is done, I'm just going to take that blue color that I previously mixed with that same paintbrush, and I'm going to just wipe it off a little bit to make sure that it's a little bit more on the light side. And I'm just going to create different strokes on the can. It's completely okay if they show that ribbed effect. This is just going to be kind of an artistic portion where you can create any shapes or any patterns you would like on your can with different colors. So 
So I'm just going around to different portions of the can I feel could use some of this blue color and putting different dots, strokes, different angles where I think is necessary. Now I'm going to clean out that same paintbrush and just make sure it's completely free of that blue color. And I'm going to begin mixing this second color that I want to create that's a little bit more of a salmon color. So by doing this, I'm gonna add some white to that mixture. I'll just add a small amount and then we'll begin mixing this to create the perfect light pink and peachy shade. Once your brush is coated, we are going to do the same thing. We're just going to create dots, different lines, different strokes, all around in the empty spaces where we did not use the blue color around the entire can. I'm now going to add a little bit of this gold color that I had and I'm going to put this in with the mixture of the brown and the orange. I'm actually trying to create a copper color or more of a burnt orange color and this will give it a little bit of a shimmer as well from different angles. So I'm going to clean up my brush completely, the same one that I've been using. Just stir that mixture together and this will create a nice copper color. So the same thing as before, I'm just going to coat my paintbrush and I'm going to go around in some of the blank areas and create different dots and lines and different angles that kind of fill in the blank spots. All right, that is looking good. So we can move on to the next step. Now we're going to begin using this black color. We are going to take one of our smaller brushes that has more of a circular point at the top. We are going to just put a little bit of that paint on the top part of the paintbrush. And we are going to use this for precise circles around the entire can. So I'm just going to go in wherever I feel would look best and just create dots and whatever pattern you would like so mine will just be more of a little bit of a random pattern and I'll do this in different spots around the entire can So this is the last step of the design, so you can go ahead and put as many or as little dots as you would like, just to fill in any portions you feel could use a little something extra. I really like that this black color is going to make this pop a little bit more, especially with all the bright and light colors on the can currently.
All right, so I'm just doing some finishing touches. I'm going back through and seeing where I feel I could use a little bit more and just putting some final touches on there to make it look complete. Perfect, so now that we're done with that, we're gonna let the paint can dry. We are actually going to clear our space so we can move on to the next portion. We're going to just set the can on top of your paint plate and we're going to move everything out of the space, including the paint brushes, the paper towel, and I am personally going to remove the newspaper just so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing in this next portion. With a black background, it will be a lot easier for you to see this portion. So this part is going to be where we begin the macrame and let me just preface this by saying this is very simple macrame so I believe it's something that we can all do together. You are going to want to take your yarn or your thread or twine of some sort. You're going to want to measure out six pieces that are all about three and a half feet in length. So just go ahead and start doing that right now. I will give you a little bit of time to get those measured out and cut. So six pieces each at three and a half feet. Okay, now that we're done with that portion, we are just going to see how the lengths look. And don't be alarmed if they're different lengths, that is perfectly fine. We are just going to see which ones look as close as possible in length. And we will start with that side. So you can just pull these from the middle to look at both sides to see that they are both either equal or showing a little bit of different lengths, which is again, perfectly fine. So I'm gonna start with this end. And what you're going to do is you are going to just create a knot just like this. Just create a knot, pull each of the pieces of yarn through to the other side. We want this to become a tassel at the very bottom of what our planter is going to look like. So with this, you might want to scoot your knot up a little bit. This will just create a little bit of a larger tassel toward the bottom. And as you can see, this created a nice knot with a tassel at the very bottom. Now this bottom portion is directly where you will be working from. So even though the strings are very long, as you can see, you are going to want to try to keep everything as organized as possible. So just lay down the knot on your surface and divide these into three sections, each having two pieces of your string in each section. By doing this to begin with, it's going to keep your space as organized as possible, and it will help you see what I'm doing in order to recreate this on your own. So just go ahead and separate these so you can see that there are two within each grouping, and we're gonna move on to the next part. 
As we start spreading these apart, you're going to want to start with the section of four and you're going to take the inner two of these within the section. Make sure they are all spread out equally. Grab those two in the center and you are actually going to go up about an inch and a half to two inches from where the knot begins and you are going to create another knot with these two pieces of thread. So go ahead and take those two, wrap it around in a knot form, tuck it underneath and pull it through. When you do this, please make sure that you are keeping a little bit of looser knots just because you wanna be able to have flexibility with this if needed. So just barely pull this to create your knot. You are now going to do this for the left side. So now you're going to take the innermost pieces of string, grab them again, about an inch and a half to two inches from the knot, and you're going to create another knot with this portion. Pull it around and bring it through to the top. Again, just very lightly pull on this. Make sure that it's about equal with the other knot in the placement. And now we are going to take the two outermost pieces of yarn. We're gonna pick up these guys and we're gonna just pull them forward so we can grab those. We are going to create a knot with these two as well, the same way that we just did before. So pull it around, tuck it under, and pull it through to create that knot. And this will create the portion that will actually hold your planter to begin with. Now that we have our three sections all ready to go and separated, we are just going to keep repeating this process. So again, to keep things organized, just separate things as much as possible. I'm going to bring this down so you guys can see what I'm doing next. You're going to just separate these pieces of string from one another. And then you're going to create the same process over and over again. So if you're counting from the left, we're going to take string four and five, and we're going to create this process again as they are the most inner pieces of string on this side. We're going to create another knot again I'm just going to adjust this a little bit so you guys can see exactly what my handwork is doing. So just let me pull this down. Make sure everything is staying organized. And we are going to create a knot again here. So go ahead and just begin this process by measuring it. This one can be a little bit smaller at about one inch in comparison to where the knot is located. And we are going to just wrap this around, pull it through, and create another knot. You're going to do this again with string number two and three, and just grab those together about one inch from where the knots are located and you're going to create another knot again, just like we just did previously. So just wrap it around and pull it through, making sure everything is still in an organized position so you don't get anything knotted up. Very gently pull those together to create that knot. And lastly, we are just going to take the two outermost strings. We're gonna pull those guys up again to get out of our way. And we're just going to create the same exact motion about one inch from these two knots. Create a knot itself, pull it around and wrap it under and pull it through. And then just very lightly create your knot after that is done.
All right, so now we have a little bit of a base for what our plant is going to be sitting in. And when I say plant, I mean the tin can with the plant inside. So I'm gonna pick it up from the middle and you guys could kind of see what that would look like. The tassel will be on the very bottom. And you just want to separate these again as we go ahead and move on to the next portion. So take those innermost four and five number string, turn them around, pull them through to create a knot. We're going to just pull that through about one inch from the two knots that are already formed. Do the same on the left of that with the two strings number two and three pull those through and create a knot and lastly you just take those outer two strings pull these forward to grab onto these just go ahead and do the same thing about one inch from the two knots All right, so now you can see that this is creating the base. You can see that it's kind of creating that hole where you would set your tin can. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look here to see if this is going to match the exact dimensions of our tin can. So just go ahead and take a look at this. If it looks dry enough, you are welcome to go ahead and test it out. So what I'm going to do is just grab the tin can. I'm going to place it inside of the macrame that I just created. This might be a little bit tricky because it might be a little tangled for you. Just start where you see an opening and go ahead and just pull up on each side where you have created the double strings with the knots. You're just going to take each of those groups, pull them together in the middle keep the string out of the way find that third one bring it to the middle pull it together bring it out of the way and you'll see that this is actually creating that macrame base that you need so what we're going to do is we are going to create one more grouping of these to finish off the base of our macrame plant hanger I'm just going to separate these one more time. Make sure that they are not tangled. Just pull them all the way through. Pull them out and separate them on your platform. And do that with the third one as well. And we're just going to repeat the same process. Taking number four and five. Grabbing them about one inch from where those knots are. Wrapping the string around and pulling it through to create a knot. We're going to do the same thing with string number two and three. We're going to pinch it about one inch from where the knots are located, wrap it around and pull it through. Lastly, the same with the two outer strings, pull these forward wrap around and grab these ones, pull it around, and then you're going to just pull it through to create that last knot. And again, just make sure that this is about one inch from the other knots. So now you for sure have the exact base that you need to hold your plant. So again, this portion might be tricky because it might be a little tangled for you and it might just take a few different movements to get it perfect. So again, just make sure that the, your can is completely dry so you don't smudge your paint. And you're just going to set that on the very base portion and kind of put that in the hole where you see the base has been formed and the tassels on the bottom. 
you're going to pull the three groups of strings up toward the top. This will help you latch on to the actual can and make sure that it fits the right way. So just pull that through. It might take a few different tries. As you can see, the knot is toward the top on this side, but it's not toward the top enough on this side. So I'm going to actually fix the knot to bring it a little bit closer to the top. And I'm just going to take that knot, which is why we kept it a little bit on the loose side. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. And then I'm going to bring it down toward the top to become a little bit more secure. So I'm just going to gather these strings towards the top, the ones from each group. And this is what it looks like when you are about done with this portion. Again, I noticed that this is just a little bit high, so I'm going to try to pull this down just a little bit more. So this might just take a few different times to get that exact fit. Once that is done, we can move on to the next portion. And this is going to be where we're going to finish off the project to make the completed plant hanger. So I'm now going to just determine where I would like to finish off a few different knots. This is going to just determine the height and how high you would like to hang your plant hanger. My first knot I'm just going to create, it's going to be probably six to eight inches above where I originally had the finished knots located. Make sure you tighten this knot very hard because you want to make sure that this one is more secure. I'm going to go up a little bit further from where that knot was located. Now we are going to decide exactly how high we want to hang the planter. So I'm going to create one knot towards the top here. It's going to be about another six to eight inches from where my first knot was located. And this next one is going to just be about one and a half to two inches from that knot you just created. And you'll see in a second why that is going to be. So now that these two knots are created, we have a place to separate these and actually hang this from a surface, whether it be from a hook, from the mirror in your car, which you would want to make that space bigger, or it could also just be hung up somewhere in your house. We're going to finish by taking our scissors and leveling off this tassel at the bottom. So just clip that where you feel looks best. And now everything is level. And we are actually going to do the same thing with the very top as you will have a little bit of a tassel there too. So we are going to just measure out where we think would be best to cut this. A little bit shorter would be better. So I'm going to take it right here and go ahead and cut it right there. So now we are completely finished and you can hang this from anywhere in your house. All you have to do is just add some soil and a plant later on. And this is the completed finished product. For now, I have just added a fake plant, a little succulent, and I put some newspaper underneath it so it would stand up toward the top a little bit more. But I think that I'm going to add a real plant later on when it is more safe to go out and grab those things from different stores. So that is it. That is the completed look. And again, thank you so much for joining me today as this was our last project together. I really appreciate you guys coming together with me each and every week and connecting on a different level for crafting and I hope you guys have had just a great time. Please join me as we finish with our last prayer together. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing us together these past few weeks. It has been a blessing to be able to come together during a moment of uncertainty and uneasiness. We appreciate your constant guidance and help as we navigate through these changes in our world. 
but are appreciative that we are able to still come together virtually, even though we are not physically together. Please help everybody find the peace that they are searching for and be their foundation as they may be hanging from a thread. We still know that you are holding this spool. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you all again so much for coming together with me each and every week for Painting with a Prayer. I hope you all are a little bit more inspired to do more crafting outside of this. And please feel free to just contact Cornerstone UMC if you have any other small group ideas or thoughts about everything that has been going on in our virtual ministry. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your weekend.